Greetings one, greetings all. It's the 11th of November 2008. You may see that poster around town in the shops. Um, we're trying to save the hospital. It's under attack as we speak. Bringolai is already gone. Bringolai being a listed building. Um, now unfortunately Bringolai changed its name to Worthig, so it's on the preservation list. Someone must have pointed them, uh, what's that up there? That's Bringolai. Oh, that's not on the list. We'll knock it down. They've knocked down a listed building. It has to be rebuilt. We insist upon that. Brick by brick. Okay. Um, oh, and don't let them say it can't be done. It was built once. It will be rebuilt again. Okay, well, I'm not really talking about uh, uh, the Save the Hospital protest that's happening on Friday. Um, I'm not even going to talk about, um, you know, the hospital... Uh, with regard to, you know, what we're going to do to prevent further demolition. What I'm going to talk about tonight is, well, it's time for a ghost story. I think we need to cheer ourselves up with a ghost story. Now then, um, we have to go to Frank on Ward, Mail 6, uh, and I'm going back a decade, decades before I arrived there, which was in 1974. Uh, now, in those days... Um, tea used to be delivered the staple diet of the patients of the staff was a nice cup of rosy a nice cup of tea panad a nice panad and tea used to be delivered to the wards in huge crates in huge boxes and um, the tea would be spooned out into a sort of muslin um, uh, bag dipped into the boiling hot water and poured out from there it was the best of british tea well it's not british tea it's obviously um uh probably from China or India or wherever, but it was the greatest tea, uh, good old-fashioned English tea. And it used to come in these huge boxes. Now, it was put in these muslin bags and it produced an excellent brew. Uh, but you think, well, at the end of that, they would throw the tea bags away, the, the tea uh, leaf away, because it was pure leaf, no tea bags. Um, uh, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What they used to do is they would drain um, the, the tea, uh, the used tea, put it on a huge tray and put it in the hot plate and it would dry. The tea would dry. Waste not, want not. Um, when it had dried, they would then uh, get the tea every morning. There'd be a, some tea prepared. And they would throw it onto the floor of the day room of the dormitories what have you and then uh, a patient um, one particular patient who did it for 20 years would get his uh, rush and sweep up the tea the tea used to gather up all the dust throwing the tea on the floor and the brush all the dust would be attracted would be attached to the old dried tea leaves absolutely amazing and then another patient would come with a small uh, shovel and they would shovel the tea and the dust and everything into a bag and that's how they kept the ward sparklingly clean absolutely dust free because of this tip with tea um, of course that's from decades ago that sort of uh, hmm, that sort of art that sort of skill uh, has died it's gone from memory but i thought i'd just let you into that secret but it does involve the story in some little way um and really involves uh what goes on after the tea after the tea's been swept up and put away it's then time to give it a bit of a, a buffer and huge buffers would then emerge and patients there was you know the patients basically did all the work in the hospital uh a couple of patients come out with huge buffers and a little bit of wax and the floors would be waxed and this was every single day at exactly the same time every morning uh, even on christmas day even on christmas day and if you don't believe me if you don't believe this you ask your granddad you ask your dad um if he's worked up there he will remember that he will remember his dad telling him that every day even christmas day that was the routine hospital was all about routine patients did it every single day for decades okay um i was in fives uh 
which was the uh, the ward below the ward below male six for Frank on board Aruri was male five and I um, remember re- oh, excuse me I remember um, in the morning what we used to do was we would shave the patients with uh, oh, um, with a wet shave it was mm, yes patient uh, wards did have electric razors um, there'd be two electric razors on the ward a third would be in the um, in the menders because it was sort of burnt dry um, from use you'd stand there bzz, 20 patients in front of you you shave them one at a time by the time you finished you were holding the razor the electric razor in a in a towel because it was red red hot and eventually it would just burn out and you'd have to send it to, to the fixers to get mended anyway fives wasn't really like that because we had some old-fashioned uh, charge nurses there and um, he liked a wet shave and we used to have to provide that. And anyway, every morning I used to hear this bump, 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 bump from up in sixes. And it was the same bump, 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 bump. And I always thought it was someone kicking off. But after about a month, because uh, I was placed in fives, after about a month of, of a th- three month stay, um, bump, 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 bump. I thought, well, something goes on at 20 past nine every morning up there. Now, I was only a young lad. Like I mean, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty big unit, or whatever. And upstairs were some were the worst of the patients. Um, so I had a tendency to sort of go up there. So, say the alarm, say the balloon went up, they'd send me up, and uh, you know, I'm a big unit or whatever, and uh, I'd help them, um, you know, to assist the patient uh, into the side room. Um, I decided to go up one day and investigate what the heck was going on at that time, day after day. And I heard it, bum, 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 bum. Through the door, went up the stairs, bang, straight through into the door in sixes. Nothing there. Nothing there whatsoever, apart from, in the corner, the domestic sucking on a rolly round. A couple of patients rocking back and forth in their chairs, staff in the office, going through case notes, having a cup of tea. Not a sound, nothing that would indicate a bum, 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 bum. Anyway, down the stairs I went and I happened to, um, I worked mainly with one old charge nurse uh, and I happened to mention this to the other charge nurse who I only saw on a half day. Uh, what's that noise that I hear every morning? Bum, bum, bum. And he said, do you hear that too, do you? And I said, yes. He says, well, <clears throat> that's old Don. Don, who for 30 years buffed that ward floor. Buffed it for 30 years. And he says, even though he's dead, he's still buffing it. The same time, every day. Every day, including Christmas Day. Now, I was told that, and at the same time, he told me the first part of this story about the tea, about how tea was used, um, not just for drinking, but also for cleaning. So anyway, I thought I'd share that memory with you. And if if um, the time comes when we're allowed back into our hospital, um, the hospital is safe to go into, that it was returned to the community where it belongs, and if sometimes you stood underneath Frank on ward at 10 past 9, 20 past 9 in the morning, even on Christmas Day, just cock your ear and maybe you will hear Don. Post leucotomy, because pre leucotomy, he was a handful, I can tell you. But after his leucotomy, he did it for 20, 30 years, buffing. Bum, 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 the floor of Frank on ward. And not a bit of dust not a bit of dust not like today i can tell you anyway thanks for listening and um save the north wales hospital you do your bit